Thank you for coming and welcome to my senior art show. Um, it is called Illume. Um, it is on view at the Davidson College Smith Gallery in the Visual Arts Center only for the Davidson campus community through March 23rd. My name is Emily. I am a senior um, art and environmental studies double major here at Davidson. And today I'm just gonna walk you through my senior art show and give you a little more insight into my artistic practice and visual process. Before I get started though, I just wanted to thank a few people, um, the studio art faculty, my art advisor, my environmental studies advisor, as well as the gallery staff and interns who have been helpful throughout this entire process of from the beginning to end. Um, as well, just wanted to give a shout out to the other art majors and my family and friends for their support. So to get started, I wanted to talk about this piece first because I felt like it gives a lot of the basis for the concepts that I'm thinking about through this entire show. Um, one of the, the first thing I wanted to speak on is my inspirations from light from my studio windows. I'm really drawn to the shadows and reflections that this light is making in my studio. And I'm really drawn to the way the architecture of the window hits my studio walls and interacts. And I enjoy interacting with it in that space. Um, and this, this light allowed me to create this piece where I was able to layer different photographs of different environments. And so this piece came about when I printed two images double-sided. And once I held it up to the light coming in from my studio windows, both of these landscapes became visible through that light. I then worked and I cut back into those spaces, which allowed the surrounding environment to show through. And again, without the light, those that idea of the surrounding environment coming through and these layering of environments wouldn't have been possible. I'm also really inspired by or interested in the intersection of the built and the natural environment and that shows through here as well with the architecture of the window contrasting the more natural forms. I'm going to move on to this next piece over here. Another part of my practice that's important to me is my inspirations from my surrounding environment, specifically the, um, the environment of North Carolina. And this piece, I was, like I said, inspired by the mountain environment, but specifically a stream bed in North Carolina that I photographed. And I was really drawn to the way the light was capturing the flow of water down a stream and how the um, that water was colliding with a more stable rock form. And it is those like micro scale environmental moments that I'm really, really interested in. And that was the basis behind this painting with the light capturing that moment of collision between water and rock. I'm gonna move on to these next pieces, which also show this idea of the micro scale environment. I'm really, really interested in the terrain of rocks and found objects from my um, collections and findings from the natural world. I brought these rocks into my studio and was really drawn to the way the light was highlighting and capturing different terrains and textures on the rocks. And that's, that's, that's formed the basis of this. Again, the light combining with my observations of these natural objects. To me, the light then highlighted these rocky terrains and landscapes on the rock that I hadn't seen prior. And again, I think that ties back to my real interest in the micro scale and how the micro, I guess just how my visual interest in those micro scale environments, like how a rock texture becomes so much more and really becomes like a mountain terrain or something if you looked at it really closely. I also for these wanted to break away from a square canvas and have them in a more natural shape. So that's what inspired um, the shapes of these as well. Um, another thing that's important to my practice is layering different color in paint and pen. And I'm gonna to touch on that a little bit more right here with this one. 
the, like I just mentioned, layering different paints and colors is important to my process because there I get to build up these spaces like the building up of layers underneath the earth's surface that I'm walking on and these different colors and paints just build up naturally for me in that way, like they would in the natural environment. So I see parallels directly there to how I'm working and what I'm thinking about. I was also, yeah, this piece started out completely differently from how it ended up. I originally was um, in wanting to capture some of the elements of that first photograph I showed you. And I really got invested in the rocky forms of those of that photograph. I started began adding more color elements to this inspired by the colors that I was seeing outside of my studio window from the trees or different sunsets outside of that step studio window. I hung this up on my studio one day and the shadows from the window and the reflections that the window were making on my painting just like completely captured me and I wanted to bring back that idea of built and natural environment to this piece. And so the shadows from my window and the light from my window really helped me do that. Another thing that's important to my process is my layering of salt and the techniques I use to layer salt. To me, it, this use of salt evokes a sense of place and connection to place of my surrounding environment of North Carolina. I'm, the, the salt, like I said, evokes, helps me evoke this connection to like more coastal environments of North Carolina, as well as speaks to more micro scale environments again, because the salt could become a texture of a seashell that I found or a rock that I found as well. I think the idea of the flow of water and how it's um, those water environments also came up again in this piece as well, how that's a constantly changing environment as well. And I wanted to convey that with these pooling and different puddlings of paint in this piece as well. These works here, I was interested again in the idea of a micro scale environment and the different layers and textures and terrains that can be found on a rocky surface. I used pen and watercolor mostly for these to sort of evoke a more landscape in a simple rock. There's a lot there that you can, I don't know, once you get up close with that rock, you can really see the beautiful landforms that those texture, that those um, natural objects are making. And so these helped me then make them bigger in those like rocks, rocky pieces that I just showed earlier. To continue through the gallery space, this one again, I was interested in similar themes of the texture of micro scale natural objects, as well as different natural processes happening in the environment. The use of texture plays a role here as well to evoke again, those micro scale environments. And I wanted to end on this one because I feel like it comes back to the idea of um, the built versus the natural. For this one, I was really inspired by fall and autumn landscapes and seasons. And for me, one of the places that I connect to fall is my grandparents' home. So I wanted to include some of the architecture of their home back into these fall landscapes. And I did that with ink transfer. And so that idea of built versus natural came back in here with this work as well. And so I wanted to give you a nice little tour of everything in this space. Um, again, I think I'm the light really inspires my practice because it helps me see different and highlight different textures and terrains that I wouldn't see otherwise. And it brings in this idea of built and natural environment, which I feel like is really, it surrounds me and how I, I think about it when I'm walking around different places and ties me back to my surrounding environment, which is so important to my practice. And so I wanted to thank you all for coming. Um, I'd be happy to take any questions. I think we have time for questions, so.
Um, yes. Um, so you say you were drawn to these um, micro scale environments, but was this draw based on like the detail or the intimacy of these small environments or um, patterns or I know you mentioned textures a lot. Um, is there anything else that drew you to those? Sure. Um, it's a great question. Thank you. I'm, yeah, I think when I look at a rock or a small environment, I see parallels to larger environmental structures and processes that are happening. So I feel like a, like the terrain that I'm seeing on a rock has direct parallels to a larger environment, but just I guess seeing it up close on a personal scale or up in a really like close scale, I can then translate these forms to a larger scale. And yeah, I think there's a beautiful, like these terrains I wouldn't have, I guess, just noticed otherwise. They're really beautiful and hold a lot of texture and ways for me to visualize um, and connect to the environment in, in that way, I guess. Um, Emily, somebody had a question about, can you please further explain micro scale? Sure. When I'm thinking of a micro scale environment, I'm thinking of a really, really small place in the natural environment. So like a rock or the collision between a rock and water and those moments that are happening. They're really, really small, but they, they're happening all around us. And so that, again, I think ties back to my inspirations from my surrounding environment. When I'm walking outside, I'm noticing these little small moments in nature that are just happening all around us. And then there's another question um, that says, is the built in natural concept new to your art or a theme that's always been in your art? I think I've explored it in different ways, but I've seen it sort of with fresh eyes through the use of this window. And I feel like it's, yeah, it's become a lot more sharp and in focus through the window um, because like, I guess when those shadows come through on my studio window, they're really, they're really there, I guess. And that's real um, versus, and so they come up more, I guess we could come here to talk about it. Um, yeah, so I think those geometric lines have come in in different ways than I had been thinking prior. I think some of the works I had been making prior, maybe the lines flowed a little bit more in, in these paint layers that I was making, but with the use of the window, they became a lot more sharp and in focus. I'd be happy to jump in if there's space. I, I don't know whose hand is up or if I need to be called upon. Um, but I did have a question. Um, Emily, so much has changed in the past week. <laughs> um, well, which I'm thrilled to see. Um, what do you think in the past couple of weeks with so many changes happening in your studio, um, what did you take away from that? Was there an epiphany you had in the last moment of, of really finishing up your artworks for the show and seeing it as a collective whole of very large scale, a lot of them paintings um, that speak to very small scale moments. Mm -hmm. I would say that I started more of a sketchbook practice this semester with my the small paint, the images that I showed earlier in the frames. Um, that helped me, I think, in my studio create these larger pieces after I was doing these really small studies of different rocks and natural textures that were in my environment, I was then able to translate those on a larger scale through those um, rock pieces that I was showing. So I think working in different sizes and um, scales helped me realize a lot of these works um, this semester. And then we have a question from Tyler Starr. He says, what are some of the differences you notice between your photo derived info and your paint derived info? To me, I see more similarities, I would say, than differences. Because my photos, a lot of them actually inform my painting practice. For instance, I might not have mentioned this here, but this became this piece um, 
was derived from one of the photographs I've taken. So I'm sort of selective in um, the photographs that I'm drawing my inspiration from. But I do think the photography was something that I did get into this semester with the work that I first talked about. Um, and that helped me also further engage with my surrounding environment and what I was capturing in this, both in the studio and outside the studio. And so I think that also helped me sort of further conceptualize and visualize how the light was playing a role in my practice as well. And then another question is, how does learning more about a place or natural environment or process find its way into your aesthetic experience of that same object or set of objects? It's a really good question. I feel like, yeah, it allows me to pause and think about the environment in ways that I wouldn't otherwise, just because I have this object here and it came from a specific place, but I just, maybe I just have the object and I have memories of the space, but together, I guess those allow me to become, to come, to become a fuller um, work. And yeah, I think just having that object takes me back to like maybe the place that I collected it, which was like probably maybe my backyard during quarantine or something like that. And so, yeah, I think just knowing, I guess, where the object comes from holds a lot of memory to me of the place and how I'm thinking about when um, conveying those places in my painting. And then we have two more. Um, can you explain the salt? Is this something you use to manipulate paint? Sure. Should we go to one that has, okay. I think this one might be a good example and you might be able to see it. I layer the salt with my paint to help with the flow of paint. And um, yeah, the salt absorbs different absorbs the paint and allows me to control where the paint is going. So it becomes an, both an added layer of texture and a mechanism I use um, in my painting practice. And then again, to evoke those micro scale and textures that I'm really drawn to. Okay. okay, and then last question, what role, if any, do experimental processes play in your practice? I think that's, one of the things that excites me about my process is that I am layering different colors and paint and living in the moment of the paint being poured onto the canvas, like the flow of river down the stream. You don't really know, like it's gonna go somewhere and you're just enjoying that process of watching it happening and then creating layers on top of that. And then, but being intentional about where the different colors are going or where the textures are being put on top of the paint. Um, yeah, it's, it's a fun process and allows me to keep engaging with my surrounding and natural environment as well. Oh, yay. Thank you so much, everyone. You're fantastic, Emily. Thank you. Yay. Thanks, everyone. Thank you all so much.